So check this out. This right here is a manifold. This is a crazy beautiful part, but it's more than that. These aren't just drilled and threaded holes. These are made with something called a port tool. So what is a porting tool? A porting tool is a standard across the industry made to an exact spec. So the part we're gonna be making originated from an MS16142, but that's the military version. We're gonna make an SAA J1926-6, which is gonna be the civilian market. What makes it cool is all the different crazy angles. You have a taper, a reamer, a 12 degree, 45 degree, and then a spot face. Now, all of those parts we're gonna talk about while we're actually grinding the part and what purpose they have in this hole. The main thing I wanna tell you about is that the O-ring on this surface has to fit perfectly. So make sure you stick around and I'm gonna show you different applications of what this porting tool is used for. And after I grind it, we're actually gonna put it in a mill and make some chips. So later in the video, I'm gonna go more in depth about what a porting tool is. But for now, let's go ahead and get set up so we can start grinding. So these porting tools started with the military usage, but after a while, the civilian market actually transitioned to do it. And that's why we went from an MS standard to an SAE standard. That way the military can outsource and get it made by civilian contractors. So our wheels are balanced, checks out green. Let's go ahead and print off our calibration sticker. So the tool we're gonna be making today is actually a Reamer Pilot porting tool. Now that tool's still gonna need a pre-machined hole, but instead of the other solid point, this porting tool is gonna actually be one pre-machined drill hole, and then it's gonna come back in and do the entire contour at once. So you're going from three operations to two. All right, so now my wheels are dressed, balanced, and measured. So now what I need to go ahead and do is I need to take these wheels over to the water. So I'll meet you over there so we can get grinded. All right, so we talked a little bit about what a porting tool is and we measured some wheels, but let's talk about how we're gonna do the work holding. So this is gonna be our preformed carbide blank. And what's gonna happen is this draw bar is gonna go inside that spindle. Then we're gonna put the cap on and then we're gonna mount the collet into the draw bar. So that draw bar is gonna be threaded on the collet. That way, when we put the carbide blank in there and it draws back, it puts pressure on the taper and it stops it from coming out. Now, once it releases, releases out that pressure. So enough about that, let's go ahead and put it in the machine. So while I'm roughing out this preform, I wanna talk a little bit about the Terralit RC wheel. So this wheel I'm running at 3000 SFM or almost 2000 RPM. Now I'm gonna run this wheel a little bit slower because I want a good breakdown. But this wheel's phenomenal at really breaking down carbide and getting it up and out of the way. So this entire preform is being made in about nine minutes. Now that's really great and it's high efficiency. So make sure you go ahead and check out our store if you're looking for a dedicated roughing wheel for tool grinding. Look at that thing go. So what this operation is actually doing is it's grinding out the steps and removing most of the carbide. That way when I come in with the clearance, it doesn't take off too much because I'm doing that with an 11V9 wheel. Now that wheel is really great for fine detail work, but it's not really meant to take a whole bunch of carbide. So that's why I'm using my roughing wheel to get that part down to size so I can go ahead and finish it with a nice clean cut. The tolerance for my tool is 502 to 515, and that's gonna be for the minor diameter of my thread. So, what I wanna do is I wanna put it right in the middle at 507, so I'm gonna go ahead and check it with an OD mic. So I'm at 514, that's gonna leave me seven thou to go ahead and clean up on a contour grind. But I wanna go ahead and clean it up a little bit, and I'm gonna use a wheel with better edge retention. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to a StarTech XPP Plus wheel. The good thing about the Walter Vision is that this one comes with an eight wheel tool changer. I lucked out and I already had the XPP Plus located in there. So now all I have to do is go ahead and load it into the program and make sure it clears and I'm good to grind. So 
So now that my contour grind is complete and I'm on size with my part, I can go ahead and switch over to my RC wheel and start my fluting passes. Now, the fluting operation is gonna be broken down into two different operations. The first one's gonna be my initial flutes and I'm gonna do my phase angle at zero degrees. Now for that, I'm gonna go four equal passes of about 100,000 feet each pass at four inches a minute. I can take it all in one pass, but I would have to slow my wheel down to one inch per minute. But if I go ahead and do four equal passes at four inches per minute, it's gonna be about the same for my cycle time. And that's gonna be great for this RC wheel and not break my wheel down so I can hold my fluting size. And then I'm gonna do a secondary fluting operation with that phase angle being negative 25 degrees. Now what essentially what that's doing is that's creating a flute in two different spots, but it's following the same path. So now that I've ground both my fluting operations, I can go ahead and switch over to my StarTech XPP Plus 11V9 cup wheel. Now a cup wheel is designed for use for clearances, and that's what I'm gonna use to go ahead and put the clearances on my porting tool. So another reason why I wanted my porting tool to be on size for my preform operation is that when I put the two clearance angles on the outside diameter, it's not gonna remove that much material, so my tool is basically gonna be on size once I flute it. The clearance angles are just gonna give me proper chip evacuation to get those chips up and out of there and give me a nice clean cut. Now for the clearance grind on this porting tool with my 11V9 wheel, I'm gonna start at the back of my tool and I'm gonna grind down to the front of my tool and that's gonna complete my two clearances. So our tool's finished and it looks great. Now let's go ahead and break down what this geometry of this tool is. So the first angle here is just gonna be a lead-in angle that leads up to my reamer size. That way I can thread my pull hole. Then I have a 45 degree edge break followed by a 12 degree angle. And then after that is gonna be my spotting face. Now those are all the components that make up this SAE port number six porting tool. So with the porting tools complete, instead of giving it to Jesse, we're gonna go ahead and give it to my boy Dre, see what happens. He so. normally gives it all to Barry, and that didn't work, so now he gives it to his new guy. That's the best alternative, is the new guy. Thanks, Jesse. <laughs> Always looking out. I just wish Titan would hire someone that I was taller than, but that pool is very small. Just like you. See that banter? He's already got it. He's fitting in good here. Now let's see what Chris managed to make. Here we go. It was. <laughs> now we're gonna thread mill. See, so yeah, I like to rough out the port about five thou high and then thread mill it, then come back with the port tool, finish it, and then run one more spring pass with the thread mill. Because burrs are always a huge issue with ports. Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna run the finish pass on the port tool. It looks pretty good with the- Yeah, it looks awesome. I'm impressed. See that? I impressed them. Okay. Every tool I gave Barry broke, so we're, we're one for one with Dre, so. Love you, Barry, I'm just playing, don't hurt me. How does it feel, Dre? Nice. So Dre just checked it with the thread gauge. This port tool came out absolutely perfect. We grounded on the Vision 400L, so we were able to program and run that part in a single day. Then we took it over here to the MCO mill. We had Dre set it up, program it using the solid cam, and then we went ahead and ran a successful part. 
So as you can see, Dre machined one port with threads and then he machined one port without threads for camera purposes. Now let's go ahead and give it to Barry so he can cut it in half on the EDM so we can give you a nice cross section.